Hey, today I want to comment on this ministry and homes they're building for homeless people. I want to show you this video and actually add some comments to it as we're watching along together. Can you catch the very subtle deception in this good works ministry venture? In this otherwise unremarkable area of Austin, Texas, there is a community that very well might be an answer, even the answer, to a problem plaguing cities coast to coast. We have a phrase that housing alone will never solve homelessness, but community will. Community. It's about community. It's about people being lonely, man. We so true. You know, back in the day, the church was the one that took care of the homeless, the orphans, and the widows. It was the church that went in to help the homeless people. It wasn't the government helping them. It was the churches. So when the government said, don't worry about it, we'll take care of it, the churches took a back step. And we see the issue with the homelessness that's all over the streets and all over the cities. This is a church's primary job is to help the orphans, the widows, and the homeless. Middle of the Mobile Loaves and Fishes Community First Village with founder and CEO Alan Graham. What started with a few used trailers has now grown to scores of tiny houses. There will be more than 500 units by the end of the year. How do I qualify to get in here? Unaccompanied male or female, no children, yeah. with a disability, having lived on the streets of the Travis County for at least a year. You're moving from phase one. So this is great because they actually have criteria in order to get one of the 500 homes that they are building for the homeless community. Number one, you have to have been homeless for a few years. You can't just quit your job and say, I don't, I want to live rent free. I don't want to pay my bills. I just want to move into one of these homes. No, you actually have to be homeless. You actually have to have a disability, meaning if you have no disabilities, you should be able to get a job, right? If you have a disability and you're homeless and you know, you're know you single, then you are eligible for one of these homes. So it's really great. They have criteria. Let's keep watching. There's a waiting list of 160 as for rules Restrictions for drug or alcohol dependency do not exist. Zero. We live in a world where we have been experimenting with prohibiting those things for over a hundred years here in the United States. And how successful are we? The okay, so this is where I disagree with them. There's nothing wrong with having some rules set in place with a community that you're building. There's nothing wrong with it especially if you're giving them a free home. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, listen, we're going to give you a free home, but these are some of the rules that we're going to abide by here. There are no drugs, no alcohol, no prostitutes. There's nothing wrong with having a list of requirements for a blessing that they're getting. There's nothing wrong with it. By saying, hey, it's an open space, you can do whatever you want, is very dangerous. It's a very dangerous premise. And again, you sh there's nothing wrong with have community guidelines when you're delivering them a service, right? there's nothing wrong with it. It's faith-based. It's ethos found in both the Old and New Testaments. Love your neighbor. Sprinkled among the formerly homeless are people like Neil and Lynn Nolan, who chose to leave their affluent Austin neighborhood and instead live here, as the Bible says, among the least of these. You two have been out there almost a year now. What's the most important thing you've learned? When you muscle that energy to continue to stay in there and walk the journey that they're on with them, by them as their neighbor, it is incredibly fulfilling. Expectation-wise, has it been as important as you hoped it would be? More so. More so. This is great. I mean, this is the Bible in action, right? It is more blessed to give than to receive. It's a blessing to give. It's a blessing to help the orphans, the widows, the homeless. It's a blessing. This is amazing to see, but I want to comment on a few more things they're going to mention where I'm like, mm, almost like this is really good. There's just a few little things are missing. Oh. It's easy to say I'm going to meet people on their level, but it's another thing to actually live it and do it on a daily basis. It's evangelism minus the sermons. It's faith with works. What we want people to do is preach the gospel often and only when necessary use words. Okay, this is the part, again, I disagree with. Number one, it's amazing, right? 
to exemplify the Bible and to live it, right? Not just talking, 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 but actions, right? We're not just talking and praying for the homeless. We're actually going out there and helping the homeless. This is one of my dreams in the future to actually have a community like this where we're feeding the homeless, but not just feeding them in the natural, but also feeding them in the spirit. Did you hear what man of God, conductor of this mission said? I mean, glory to God. I'm not trying to say anything bad about him, but I want to comment and add and encourage him to add the word of God, right? He says, we don't do sermons. We don't talk about the word of God unless it's absolutely necessary. Every day it's necessary. (laughs) Every day it's necessary. Again, if you're providing a service, a free home, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, listen, you guys, we're going to give you a free home. We're going to give you free food, but there's just a few rules that we're going to abide by. No alcohol, no drugs, no prostitutes. And we have two services a week that you have to be present at. Maybe it's a Wednesday Bible study, a Sunday service. Maybe you can have some other services too, or or they can pick two out of four every week. Maybe you have a service Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. They can pick two or pick three, or maybe you tell them they have to go to all four. But let's say you just pick two out of the four. You have to be in attendance in order to stay in your home. There's nothing wrong with that because guess what happens? What stops just the homeless people from coming there, enjoying this home, enjoying free food and being undelivered, being unsaved, having a home that they can live in, but then die and go to hell. What mission did you really accomplish? You know, you gave them a free home, you gave them good food to eat. Okay, that's great. Good works are good, but you actually also have to preach the gospel. There is power in the Bible. You can't just tell them once in a while, we'll give you the word. And if it's really necessary, it's necessary for every human, right? Jesus said, we don't live. The Bible says, he quoted the Bible, humans don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's the word of God. Because a community like this that you would build for homeless people, it shouldn't be the mission for them to live there permanently. The mission should really be have them live there for a year or two, be discipled, transformed, converted from a poverty mindset to a kingdom mindset so that they get their own job. Then they leave and contribute into a community, not be beggars, but be kingdom mindseted Christians that are functioning in the community and have that home open for the next person to come in and be discipled. Because it seems here that they don't mind that these people live there forever. Undelivered, hearing no word of God, but being fed. Again, good works are good, but they also need deliverance. They need to hear the word of God. They are never going to transition from being homeless to being successful, mind, body, and spirit prosper as their soul prospers without the word of God. You have to read the word. And even the person interviewing this man of God is laughing. He's laughing. Even the interviewer is laughing at this comment that, oh, we don't preach the word unless it's absolutely necessary. It is always necessary to preach the word every single day. So again, there's nothing wrong with having sermons that they attend So they hear the word of God, that their mind is transformed, and then they can change their life. (laughs) No proselytizing allowed. That's why most of our neighbors love Christ, but can't stand Christians. In the village, there's an... Okay, so no proselytizing. No telling anyone about Jesus. Oh, boy. Is this a godly mission trip, or is this just works? This to me just seems like works and that's, it's not the hundred percent fullness of really what God has, because guess what? When the disciples in the book of Acts, they didn't just have a community where they all ate together. They preached the word of God. (laughs) They sang together. They prayed together. They fasted together. They were a community that were extremely persecuted in Jerusalem and in neighboring areas as well but their foundation was the word of God. They were delivered. They were really walking the Christian life. They were preaching on the streets. They were getting burned alive and thrown into cages with lions for preaching the word of God. Let me tell you about Jesus. 
how much he loves you, how much he wants to set you free and help you. We'll help you. But it's also important to know the word of God because you don't want to fall into a place where you're enabling the poverty mentality. You're right. You don't want to enable being lazy. You don't want to enable giving handouts to everyone. You want to help, but you also want to help transform and deliver them. So I love the the idea behind this, this is a God idea. It's just not in the fullness because Jesus also said, go out and make disciples, go out and make disciples. It doesn't just say help the orphans, help the widows, just give them free stuff and don't tell them the word of God. Uh-uh, you have to tell them the word of God. Studio. This was Jason did this, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah. And work opportunities. A hydroponic garden supplies free, fresh produce, but utopia, this is not. The two essential human needs are the need to be fully and wholly loved and fully and wholly known. When you bring all that uh, to the table, it creates an environment of uh, welcoming. Okay, not only do you have to feel loved, you also have to give love. To who? To God. (laughs) Love God with your whole heart, mind, and soul. So it's not just gimme, 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 jimmy, jimmy. I want to feel loved and feel satisfied in the belly and with a warm blanket. But you also have to give love to God. You also have to worship God. Praise God for all the blessings. You can't just take, take, take and not give God anything. Not give God the glory. Not give God the thanks. Not talk about God. Actually ban proselytizing, right? Converting anyone to Christianity. Talking to anyone about Jesus is banned. That's a big problem. You're missing the whole thing. Jesus didn't just do good works and sacrifice himself. He also told them, the disciples and anyone that would listen, about the kingdom of God and how to enter into it. You can't just do good works, but not tell people about the God that gave them life and life eternally. You have to tell people about God. This is such a missed opportunity. I I pray that these blessed men of God watch this and and know that I'm, I'm in with all respect, just saying, this is such a God idea, but you got to take it a step further into the actual supernatural spiritual realm where they're set free by the word of God, right? We don't want religion. We want a relationship. We want them to live in freedom. We want them to be transformed. We don't want them as a church to stay homeless forever. The whole objective from what I thought I was going to see in this video was We're going to disciple them. We're going to give them a home. We're going to teach them the word. They're going to be delivered and they're going to be set free. And they're going to move out within two years and have their own place that they can afford. They'll have their own job. They'll have their own business. Then more people can move in. What's If you're going to keep building homes for for free and not setting them free and being delivered, you're just going to have people that are needy, needy, who are just going to say, gimme, gimme. (laughs) They're just going to want stuff for free. And you're enabling that poverty mentality if you do not help them by leading them to Jesus because the truth will set them free. Amen. So Jesus will set them free from that poverty mentality, but you have to preach Jesus. you got to preach the gospel. Salad of tension. It's life. It's real life. With all the beauty and the marinade of the dysfunction all put into that one little tasting Gumbo. This fearless approach to folks living on the street is working. Travis County has pledged tens of millions of dollars in support, and ground has been broken for construction of 1,400 new units. Government uh, of the people and for the people is typically uh, risk averse and lacks innovation. And so we've come in and we've brought a tremendous amount of risk to prove something innovative my guess i don't know this for a fact this is just my guess and opinion that may be the reason why they also don't they actually ban proselytizing and talking about jesus because probably they might not be getting government funding if they make that mandatory um or if they i should say if they make that part of the living requirements you have to attend church right because i don't think the government would actually give money to an organization that has those you know, religious rules. And again, it's not, it's not even about having all these rules. It's if you're going to live in a home for free, at least attend two of these four classes a week, because we want to help you to be successful, to be set free, you know, all of that stuff. We preach the word of God, go to church, 
right? To help them, not just in their body, all right, but also in their soul and their spirit. So they are figures he may have been on the street for 20 years, but no more. And you'll know find another place that cares about people like this. If this place didn't exist, would you still be on the street? If this place was, <laughs> didn't exist, I'd be dead. That's just the truth. We sat with JR on his porch, listening to him play the blues. Mournful notes that relied a hymn of gratitude. <laughs> You're playing the blues instead of playing some worship music to God. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful place. Thank you for this blessing. You can play the blues all day. You can play rock music all day. You can play pop music all day. But if you're not actually praising the God above, even from songs that you write out of your own heart, right? It's not the blues. It should be called the joys, the joy, <laughs> the joy of life eternal, the joy that God is our provider. He's El Shaddai. He's God all powerful. He's our Jaira, our provider. Hallelujah. Let's see what the rest of this clip is come and visit there three or four times a year from around the country to see how it's done. Yeah. And Alan, by the way, formerly successful real estate, commercial yeah. real estate guy, yeah. he and his wife live there too. Wow. Right in the middle of it. Right? They should take that to scale here. Yeah. Well, it's it's scalable. Yeah. yeah. It's scalable. But they call walking the walk. Mm -hmm. and the it's one thing to talk to talk. This yeah. is serious walking. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Again, it is walking the walk, but it's very superficial. I know a house might not seem superficial, but it is, right? You get a free home, you get free food, you get people to love on you, love on you, but you don't have to give up your drugs. You don't have to give up your alcohol. You don't have to hear about God. In fact, it's banned to even talk about Jesus, right? It's banned to convert anyone to Jesus. Oh boy, this is just works. I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Please leave it in the comment section down below. Do you think that this is enough? Having it open and not banning drugs and alcohol, you think it's going to lead them to Jesus? Why or why not? And then if you are on the other side where you think that they should preach the word of God, they should have some rules set in place. They should have at least a mandatory class of discipleship per week please comment down below as well. I'd love to hear your perspective on it and have a wonderful blessed day in Jesus name. Love you guys.